Gromit, do something! Call the Coast Guard! Talk about raining cats and dogs, our plumbing's in a right pickle. Fetch me my spanner, lad, while I stick me finger in the dike. Just the job. Bring it here now, will you, lad? Bring me my spanner, lad. Well done. Our troubles are over. Whoops. That was a shock. Best trip the circuit breaker, lad. And stay clear of the water. It's electric. Look out, lad. The tide's coming in. Best find another way to the circuit breaker. Tommy, have you done crackers? You'll get yourself electrocuted. Let's act fast, Tommy. Tide's coming in fast, Romy. to find some other way to reach the circuit breaker. The current's too strong, Gromit. Now we're in a pickle and no mistake. Careful, lad. That's extremely volatile compressed rocket gas. Ex NASA. This isn't just a sticky wicket, it's water logged and all. The current's too strong. Careful, old chum. Mm -hmm. 
There's no way out, lad! If you can't reach that circuit breaker, we'll be fried! Don't do it, lad! You'll blow yourself to smithereens! Lincoln Nora! Well done, Grommy! Poor be fixed in a jiffy! Just a moment, turn to the right, and now it's safe to hit the lights! That's better! Oh, there you are! Well, we'd best clean up! Crack on, lad! There's a lot to do! Sorry about the unseasonal weather. I'm afraid it means we'll have to put off our little trip to the seaside. Unless... we bring the seaside to us. Look here. We've already got a cellar full of water. Just a few more items. There we are. And we can enjoy the seaside from the comfort of our own home. Ho, ho, ho. Won't that be something, lad? We'll stay home for the holidays and have our own beach to boot. Lucky the rain's let up for now. I'll be back in a trice with all the necessaries. Sun, sand and beach umbrella coming up. you up, lassie. Of a date. Surely you're not still thinking of the beach. It's freezing cold and might rain any moment. Ach, a little wet never dampened the spirits of my biscuit. Grab your wellies and we'll be off. Duncan, I really don't think so. You must admit, it's hardly beach weather, is it? It's perfect beach weather. Nothing like a wee nipple. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, hello there, Wallace. Come and meet Duncan McBiscuit. He's an old friend. <laughs> and of course you know my two precious darlings, Fuji Woo and Tinky Wee. Say hello to Mr. Wallace, angels. Uh, yes. Uh, look, Gromit. It's your friends from next door. Cute little fellows. Oh, yes. They're show dogs, you know. Prize winners. They're my pride and joy. Well, I won't keep you. No, 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 no. Duncan was just leaving. Leaving with you, lassie, for a day on the beach. But what if there's a cloud burst? I don't consider thunder and lightning very pleasant beach companions. But there's no thunder and no lightning. Can you hear any thundering? Any cracking or booming? Well, can you? Maybe I can. Just hush your tongue a moment, will you? You can't hear no thunder, can you? Not even a wee tinkle. I suppose not. Rather stay warm and dry. I say, that's a handsome beach brolly. Perhaps you'd like to borrow it. You're most welcome. We won't be needing it as we're not going anywhere. Oh yes we are, lassie. Oh, no, we aren't, Duncan. You can borrow the brolly once Duncan and I have finished our little discussion. Oh, come on, Velocity. I won't be coming or going anywhere in this retro. We must act now before the flood. Gather the townsfolk. We'll stack the sandbags to the north, south, and east. Still time, if we hurry. Look lively now, Soda! No, 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 you can't dump these sandbags here. Just, uh, just wait a moment, Major, please. Stop dithering, you dunderhead! The town's being swept under! There's not being swept under, Major. And you're beginning to be a public nuisance.
weather, that's all. Uh, um. Yes, soldier? Out with it. Uh, well, uh, if you'd like to unload these sandbags, I know just the spot. Just as I told you, the people are pleading for sand, and we've got to give it to them. I'd like to give it to you, you loony old goat. But if you've got a need for sandbags, Wallace, I hereby grant you permission. Oh? You grant permission? Indeed. Take all you want, Wallace. Infernal cheek. I'm the commanding officer here, you jumped up Jobsworth, and I hereby revoke permission. Can't you be cooperative just this once, Major? Cooperative? Don't know the meaning of the word. Sounds subversive to me. All right, Major, how about this? Why don't we ask Wallace here who's in command? This young Tongo? Hmm. Very well. Why not? Tell us, soldier, who holds rank here? Remember your training? Two fine flavours that work well together. We're talking about who's in charge, not flavours. Just a moment. Are you saying that instead of bickering over who's in charge, we should be working together as a team, like uh, steak and kidney? Uh, are you saying that in a crisis like this, we must act as one, like a well-trained commando unit? Actually, it's a sign... Exactly, a sign that we can now rise above our squabbles. Very well, then. Um, here's what we'll do. We'll send these sandbags off with you. Thank goodness. Well, I'll be off, then. I can hear an hot meat pie calling me name. Yes, I can. Ernest Dibbins, it's saying. It's tea time. Fetch the blinking ketchup, Ernest. Now then, soldier, all I need is your requisition form. Requisition form? That's right. Got to play by the book. Can't let the spies sabotage operations, can we? Spies? Surely you've heard about the spies from abroad. They're everywhere. Don't look so rattled, man. Just bring me your requisition form, and you'll soon be neck deep in splendid sandbags. Oh, right then. Afternoon, Wallace. That's quite a light, Mr. Paneer. It's a searchlight. I say, no shortage of candle power there. Bright as the sun, don't you think? Wonderful for bringing in the big spenders. When the weather's fair, that is. I wonder, Mr. Paneer, where might a person acquire such a light? I'd be happy to lend you this one, but if the weather warms up tonight, I'll need it to advertise my super sore away sizzling summer sale. Oh. My oh, heck, it's a stack of Stilton. Oh, was that the earth shaking roar of thunder? Uh, well, actually, uh... It doesn't matter when it comes to the complex question of climate. A person should never really rely on his own senses. Only the experts really understand the weather. Oh? What's the latest cheese of the week, I wonder? Stilton. And that reminds me. I just sent the truck out with your delivery. When you return home, you'll find it waiting patiently on your doorstep. Ah, just like Gromit. Oh, you know, Mr. Wallace, there's nothing like coming home to a faithful, loyal cheese. I quite agree. Hello, love.
afternoon, Mrs. Gabberly. Hello, Wallace. Lovely weather, isn't it? Well, uh, I, uh... I'm joking, Pat. I know it's rotten. Had to cancel me holiday. That's a shame. Certainly is, being stuck with all misery guts here. I heard that! He don't miss a word I say, except when I ask him to do summit. Ah! Sitting behind a till all day ain't exactly hard labour. What would you know about hard labour? I could run this place a sight better than you, if I had a mind to. If you had a mind? What will it be, love? Looking for something to read? Take your pick. I'll put it on your slate. More rotten weather on the way tonight, they say. All set. Hey, make sure he don't nick any sweets. Mind your own business. That old misery guts thinks he could run this shop. <laughs> he couldn't run a bath. Thinking weather, eh, Wallace? It is rather gloomy. Like my business. Not a single customer all day. My sizzling summer sale has lost its sizzle. I wonder, Mr. Penier, where might a person acquire such a light? I'd be happy to lend you this one, but... If the weather warms up tonight, I'll need it to advertise my super sore away sizzling summer sale. Oh. Stormy weather ahead, I'm afraid. Oh? Oh no. After all that, my sizzling summer sale is ruined. I go on holiday, but the weather's a washout. Will the sun never shine on yours truly? I say, I wonder where a person might acquire such a light. You're welcome to borrow this one, Mr. Wallace. There won't be any sizzling summer sale tonight. Not in this blinking weather. That's very kind of you. Always happy to help. <laughs> This light will make a smashing sun. A special order for 62 West Wallaby Street. Stilton. One of my favorites. Thank you very much. Don't make me beg now. Oh, there's no need for that. It's just. I'd rather put my feet up at home. I'll just borrow this. Just the thing for our cellar based indoor beach experience. I'll leave that be. Ah, oh, yeah, it's mouth watering. Lovely. I'm still waiting for that requisition form. Chop, chop, soldier.
It's only for cheese, but give that here. Good heavens. Special orders deliver to 62 West Wallaby Street. You've done the service proud, soldier. Now stand clear. No time for chitter chatter. I'm needed in West Wallaby Street. Uh, I guess so. Nice to see you, Wallace. Nice to see you. Daisy, there we go. Hot pole, all the sun we need. The Riviera, here we come. Great news, Gromit. All the goods have been gathered. Now it's time for some elbow grease, eh? To the cellar. Job done, Gromit. Time to relax on the beach, eh? We deserve a holiday. Just a minute. Such a lovely beach. It's a shame to keep it to ourselves when we could share it with paying customers. Just imagine West Wallaby Street Water World. A genuine beach house, complete with its own all-weather seaside-in-the-cellar basement beach attraction. Oh, oh, we'll be surrounded by happy holiday makers. It'll be grand, Gromit. Honestly, what a waste of time those stairs don't get This man's ruining my blinkin' holiday. Half a mind to take my book and don't get sand in your sandwich. I was only teasing. Just ask that great big pudding there. I ain't no pudding yet. These dogs are disturbing the peace. Bylaws state that all livestock Poppy must be kept cock. under proper control My in public places. Fly, and they're not livestock. I want a refund. I want a refund at all. Refunds would indeed appear to be in order, Mr. Wallace. What do you say? Uh, uh, um, well, here at West Wallaby Street Waterworld, Customer satisfaction is our top priority. If you'll just be patient, I promise we'll have everything under control by supper time. Uh. You've got till supper time, no later. Not much of an holiday so far, I'm sorry to say. Mm, those mutts are a threat to public <laughs> safety. In the shop and never just a bit that man fruit display. Calling my dears livestock. We can't afford to give refunds, Gromit. We've spent all our money doing the house up. This could be a financial disaster. What are we going to do, lad? I never thought we'd have a house full of unhappy holiday makers. Bunch of morning minis, if you ask me. I'm having a grand old time. Well, that's one satisfied customer, anyway. There we are. This customer relationship management isn't so hard, is it, Gromit? There's hope for our little venture yet. You'd best get supper started. Make it a feast to remember. I'll see to our guests. We'll soon have a house full of happy campers, eh, lad? Anything I can do for you, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh, dear. Oh, what a mess I am! 
but it's me own fault for letting that mangy McBiscuit get under me skin. Why should I care what he says? As me mum taught me, sticks and stones will break your bones, but silly names can never hurt you. Hey, here comes trouble! Yeah, big fat pudding! <laughs> big fat pudding? Oh, oh, it's true enough, I know it. I'm out of shape for a beach holiday. Perhaps I should just get me refund and go home. Oh, no. That's kind of you, but it's no good. I can't be talked out of a mood like this, can I? Oh, well, I... Uh... Oh, what do I know? I'm going soft in the head, aren't I? Sharp as a knife. Well, now, that's kind of you to say so, Wallace. Oh, you're a very good listener, you are, Wallace. Hey, you're in a right mess, you are, Winnie Gabbley, and no mistake. What to do? What to do? There's nothing like a cup of tea. Aye, that's right. A strong cuppa cures most ills. Glad you're here, Wallace. He happen I may be knocking on. Too old for a beach holiday, that's for sure. Fresh as a daisy. Oh, I don't know about that. But it's ever so kind of you to say so. You know what? Winnie Gabbley's had enough of feeling sorry for herself. So what if I'm a bit like a pudding? I've tangled with giant bees, I have. I can take care of a bullying McBiscuit any day. Thank you, Wallace. You've a right kindly way with words, you have. Uh. Glad to be of service. I'll be fine now, Pat. Reckon I'll finish my story. Hey! In there, you big fat! Shut your trap, you tart and tear away, or I'll box your ears! Hmm, I do like a good book. No need for a refund, then? Oh, no. I'm as happy as Larry me. Oh, another happy camper. Hard at work, eh, Gromit? That's what I like to see. We'll soon have a house full of happy holiday makers, never fear. Oh, cracking idea, lad. Everyone loves a copper. You'd best attend to your pots and pans, eh? Word with you, if you please. Oh, I say, Gromit never reacts like that. Watch your fingers. You don't like anyone touching the toy. It won't mind if I borrow this.
Oh, bouncy. Needs ironing, it does. Jeez. She's scot free now. Big fella. Oh, I'm sure I recognize that handsome fellow from somewhere. <laughs> That seems to be in working order. Gangway! Cannonball coming through! Ah, uh, Mr. McBiscuit? May I, uh, have a word? Oh! Uh, later then. Crikey, the infrastructure's getting a lot of wear and tear. Very fashionable. Trouble springs eternal, it seems. Safety first! All in working order. Hello, Wallace. Uh, I trust everything at West Wallaby Street Waterworld is to your satisfaction, Miss Flit. We strive to satisfy. It's sweet of you to ask, Mr. Wallace. I'm having a wonderful time. All this drama swirling around me. But I remain an oasis of calm in the hurly-burly of holiday madness. Oh, glad to hear it. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Oh, you like this, Wallace. I've been longing for a new look, and I quite fancy this one. Very incognito, don't you think? My own babies wouldn't recognize me in this getup. Uh, I'm afraid fashion isn't really my forte, Miss Flip. Nonsense. What man is immune to the allure of a well-dressed woman? Any interest in this? Oh, thank you, Mr. Wallace. What a lovely scarf. Actually, it's a... Uh... Such vibrant colour and such a pretty pattern. It's perfect for my new look. Isn't it splendid? I have the scarf, I just need the glasses. Would you like these sunglasses? Oh, wonderful, Mr. Wallace. Very stylish. I'll use these for my new look. 
My new Luke is complete. Just a moment. You're in for a surprise. Ta-da! What do you think, Wallace? Am I not mysterious? Uh, quite mysterious, yes. <gasps> oh, where's Felicity? Where did Miss Flit go? Uh... Here I am! <laughs> we do have fun, Wallace, don't we? little fellas. Oh my. Enjoying your stay at West Wallaby Street, Waterworld, Constable? I'm this close to having your establishment shut down. Shut down? You heard me. These dogs are a public nuisance and an health hazard and all. Oh dear. Went bonkers, they did. And all because I tried to clear away that horrible little toy of theirs. I don't approve of litter, you know. I believe Miss Flit... I've warned Felicity Flit and all. And now she must face the full force of the law. I'm issuing a formal caution for the disruption of lawful quietude. It's the third I've had to write today. The third? Aye, the first two got eaten. Give this one to Miss Flit and tell her to remove her animals or I'll be forced to shut the place down. Constable Dibbins has requested... Constable Dibbins is mistaken. Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee would never misbehave. They did seem a touch rambunctious. Oh, very well. Let's get this over with. Threatening behaviour towards an officer of the law, that's a serious offence, that is. Don't think I won't lock you up, cos I will. This is your final, final warning. Tinky Wee! How could you behave like this? Mummy is very disappointed. Very, very disappointed. And what did you do to upset my precious cupcakes like that? Cupcakes? My darlings, did the bad man upset you? Don't be scared. Mummy's here now. How about a little dressing up game to make it all better? Do you want to play dress up? Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Oh, come along, my sweets. <sighs> She's lucky I didn't throw those mutts in the kennels. How are this close, how You can only push PC Ernest Dibbins so far. I hope your holiday is proceeding in a satisfactory manner, Constable. Satisfactory? Hmm. Yes. Yes, indeed. Everything appears to be quite satisfactory, peaceful and in order. Thank you, Wallace. Champion, we're getting there.
Ouch! I wouldn't want anyone to step on that toy by mistake. It's not a toy, and you can't have it. The battle isn't over. Enjoying your holiday, I hope, Major? Oh, yes, absolutely. Dashed comfortable billet you have here. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, we strive to achieve complete customer satisfaction. That wasn't so hard. Put that thing down and pay attention. Oh. I am about to reenact one of the greatest desert battles of history, the Siege of Aqaba. Not many know the tale. It was late 1914, or was it 1916? It was an even year of that, I'm sure. On the one side was a single British soldier, T.E. Lawrence, better known to you civvies as Sir Lawrence of Olivier. On the other, the invading army of the Ottoman Empire, thousands strong. You know the story. Lawrence single-handedly defended a desert fortress from a massive attack. He had only one rifle and no ammunition. He was all alone. Just like this, Lawrence watched the enemy from a secret vantage point sheltered by enormous red boulders. <laughs> anyway, as the enemy massed, vultures began to circle overhead, crying out in their desperate thirst for blood. Hmm. Anyway, now at this point your average Joe would have thrown in the towel and anything else he had to hand. But what do you think our Lawrence did? He took tea. Hmm. Anyway, Lawrence was about to dunk his digestive when suddenly... Oh, blast and bother. This isn't right. Not quite historically accurate, I'm afraid. I'll have to start again. Just a moment. Any interest in this? Perfect! Just like the great boulders of the Akaba Desert! May I offer you a spot of tea, Major? Of course! Sharpens the wits! You're in luck, my boy! I was just about to reenact the Siege of Aqaba. Do you know the story? Sir Lawrence took cover under massive red boulders. Just like this? Vultures circled the sky, crying out for blood. Just like this, our Lawrence, cool as a cabbage, took tea. <laughs> just like this. Lawrence was taking tea and about to dunk his digestive when suddenly 10,000 howling Ottoman soldiers charged the fortress. Tea was ruined, obviously. But did Lawrence of Olivier give up? Never! He took his rifle and levered the great red boulders down the dunes, rolling them straight into the enemy horde. With the invaders in disarray, Lawrence, armed only with his bayonet and still desperate for cover, counterattacked. He took them on one by one until he achieved total and complete victory. I'll just tidy this up. Your searchlight is just what West Wallaby Street Waterworld needed, Mr. Paneer. Everything satisfactory, I hope? No, not satisfactory at all. A certain Scottish gentleman has been deconstructing my constructions. Perhaps the management could have a word with him. I'm afraid Mr. McBiscuit is rather difficult to pin down. 
You've got to do something. If I can't finish my sandcastle, I'll have to insist on a refund. Your castle looks very handsome, Mr. Paneer. Such charming little bucket shapes. I do admire creative artists like yourself. Oh, thank you, Miss Flit. At least someone appreciates art and craft. Look, it's almost done. What do you reckon? Uh, very nice. That's the Enchanted Tower, where the beautiful princess sleeps, dreaming of a successful marriage to a financially secure prince. That's the royal court, where the king holds sumptuous banquets for all his royal chums. That's the Tower of Groceries, where the heroic young shopkeeper sells top quality produce. Impressive architecture, don't you think? Oh, uh, yes. That's the horrible dungeon where the mean bullying knight is kept locked in chains. I should look in on our other guests. But I'm nearly done. Just one last touch. There. The perfect finishing touch. The mark of finest quality produce. Me. Miss Flit's going to be impressed. Oh, hi, she'll be ever so impressed, I'm sure. Oh, no. Uh, whoops, my foot slipped, silly me. <laughs> my castle, stomped on by a tartan heel. See what I have to put up with? A holiday's not a blinking holiday if I can't finish my sandcastle. Now I have to start all over. Doesn't suit my immediate purpose. That's nice. Enjoying your stay? Not until my castle is complete. Have a look. It's almost done. As you can see, I've rearranged everything. It's even better than before. I see. That's the Tower of Groceries, where the heroic young shopkeeper sells top quality produce. Impressive architecture, don't you think? Oh, uh, yes. That's the royal court, where the king holds sumptuous banquets for all his royal chums. That's the horrible dungeon, where the mean bullying knight is kept locked in chains. That's the Enchanted Tower, where the beautiful princess sleeps, dreaming of a successful marriage to a financially secure prince. That's the Tower of Groceries, where the heroic young shopkeeper sells top quality produce. Impressive architecture, don't you think? Oh, uh, yes. Hey, this little fella might enhance your sandcastle. A knight to defend the castle, eh? Why not? It couldn't hurt. Just one last touch. There. The mark of finest quality produce. I can't wait to show Miss Flit. And I'm sure she can't wait to see. Oh, no. Uh, oh, my foot! My poor tender foot! It was a blasted sand trap! Oh, ow, 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 ow. Well, then. Should be able to work in peace now, I reckon. Oh, well, jolly good. Now for the finishing touch. The defender of the kingdom. However do you manage such lovely creations, Mr. Paneer? It's a knack, Miss Flit. If I hadn't made it into grocer school, 
I might have been an engineer. But of course, groceries are my first love. Ah, uh, anything else I can assist with? No, thank you, Mr. Wallace. You may consider me a happy camper and most satisfied customer. We do aim to please. Ha-ha! <laughs> At last! A house full of satisfied customers, just as I predicted. I'd best tell Gromit to lay the table. I must compliment our host. I've had a cracking holiday. Ooh, thank goodness for that. It was a near thing though, wasn't it? Ooh, smell those fish and chips. We can look forward to superior chow here in the office's mayor's one. Mm. The tableware doesn't seem to be in breach of any health and safety regulations. Enforcement's the key, of course. You smell like heaven, lassie. Did you buy a new perfume for our date? Oh, really, Duncan? That's just the flower in my hair. And I'm not sure I'd call it a date. Um, uh, before we tuck in, on behalf of the management, that is, Gromit and me, I'd like to welcome you all to our new venture. West Wallaby Street Water World, the only holiday destination with its own all-weather seaside in the cellar basement I have beach a few attraction. words to say myself. Raise your glasses. Raise them, I said. To a great day with a great lass, the sweetest sights I ever smelled. That's right, I'm talking about... Hey! Who turned out the... Ah, what's all this? Right there! Hey, Bath! Slinking Dora, Did this is a wrong do. That is there my head on the side of my head? This is like Jenny O'Connor and Vanish! I'm a fellow! 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 I'm a Help me! Help me, somebody! There's someone here. Help me. I can't move. Thank you, whoever you are. I was this close to taking my last breath. You found me just in time. I've located the victim. Mr. McBiscuit has sustained a nasty knock to the noggin and don't remember now about it. Happily, he will recover. However, aggravated thumping is a serious offence and I've no choice but to treat every one of you as suspects. Outrageous! <gasps> Would I never do Suspects? <coughs> Until our thumper is caught, nobody leaves this house. Nobody comes in. And nobody goes out. Not till I know the person who done it. I know who did it. Spies from abroad. Saboteurs from the South Sea. Thank you, Major. That's enough of your doolally chatter for now. Only cold hard facts can solve this mystery. Solve this mystery? That's right. By the book. You know, a uh, burden of innocence and uh, proof of purchase and all that. That's our real investigations. Now, what's that contraption? My latest prototype, Constable. The Deductomatic Mystery Solver. Deductomatic? Is that what's been taking money out of my savings account? Oh, no, Mrs. Gabberly. The Deductomatic harnesses unused brain power to solve mysteries. If you're pointing the finger, Wallace, any accusation must be backed up by hard fact and proven according to the law. 
well, I... Uh, that is, it should be working. Uh-huh, I've got it. All right, then. Tell us, Wallace, who thumped Duncan McBiscuit? Who done it? Who done it? Oh, that can't be right. We're waiting. Uh, 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 just a moment. Any idea who done it, lad? You wouldn't mind pointing him out, would you? Poogee Woo and Tinky Wee. <laughs> Two wee pups laying junk and low. That's tough, that is. <laughs> Silly, that. The very idea of accusing my dear doggies. How absurd. Aye, quite absurd. <laughs> Absurd, eh? <laughs> Nothing is absurd before the law. Here we go. It is the absurd claims the law takes most seriously. For, if the absurd cannot expect justice and a fair hearing, then who among us can? He's got a point. We must treat this accusation according to the law. The law requires proof. Proof requires... Uh... Hold on. Proof requires three things. First... The motive. Why did the suspect thump Duncan McBiscuit? Second, the weapon. What was he thumped with? Third, a witness. Who can collaborate? C -c -c Corroborate. Said, uh, back up your accusation. Do you have a motive, a weapon, and a witness, Mr. Wallace? Uh, I'll just recalibrate the inference ometers. There we are. What'll it be? Motive, weapon, or witness? Hmm, where to begin? Right, that's the one. What's the one? Uh, motive. I've solved the motive. Excellent! Tell us why uh, Wadgy Podge and Tinky Pink thumped Duncan McBiscuit. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Can you spare a motive, lad? I if you've got one, give it here. was working. All right, that's enough of that. Everyone can go about their normal business, but remember, nobody leaves the house until the mystery is solved. Once I have the deductomatic properly calibrated, this case will be elementary, dear Gromit, elementary. In the meantime, why don't you, uh, sniff up some clues for the deductomatic to process, eh, lad? You might start with the constable there. I expect he's got some juicy leads. I've got the suspects right where I want them. Written down on me official constabulary notepad. I'll crack the case with this, I will. got to be one of these three, but which one? Do you sense something, boy? Hmm, she clearly had a motive. 
and perhaps under that soft, knitted exterior lurks the soul of a hardened thumper. I must question her. But you do admit you had a motive. He happened I did, and I could have thumped him, buried him, and drowned him twice over since I've been down here. None of you lot seems worried about that, though. That can't be everywhere, Miss Gabberly. Not with so many suspects to interview. More important than tending the victim of the crime, is it? Look here. I can't stand around chatting all day. I have a thumper to catch. See that you don't leave the house. Took quite a thumping, didn't he? Can't say he didn't deserve it. Still can't leave him to rot all on his lonesome. Someone's got to tend to the great lug. Oh. He's coming round. Oh, my head. Somebody stop the spanning. There's a whirlpool I'm in. Don't fret, Patch, you've had a nasty knock. Did you see who thumped you? No. But I can almost remember what hit me. The terrible weapon that laid me low, it's... You saw the weapon what hit you? I, I think so. It was... Oh, I can't remember a thing. My brain's been boggled. Ooh, you've got amnesia, you have. Amnesia? Oh, no, that as well as a bind to the heat. Is it fatal? Just take things step by step, Chuck. What's the last thing you can remember? Well, I was upstairs, getting set for a jump down yon slide, but something wasn't right. Them little dogs of Felicity's were underfoot, and they wouldn't shut their yaps. Duncan McBiscuit doesn't take guff from yapping wee dugs, so I grabbed that bone toy of theirs and took it away. They didn't like it one bit. Oh, no! Best part was, when I squeezed the wee toy, it drove them crazy, because it made this noise. This noise. Oh, what was that noise? I cannot recall. My brain's turned to haggis. Don't fret, Pat. Just rest. It'll come back to you. That's it! The sound of the toy! Now I remember! Go on! Then what happened? Oh, I kept the toy and shut the wee doggies doing the slide! They didn't like that one bit neither! <laughs> I was having a grand time! I wanted a wee picky to remember by, so I went down to that photo thingamajig. I struck a manly pose and I was... I was... Uh, oh, Crivens! It's all fading away. I'll be forgetting my own name next. Oh, don't get yourself in a twist, love. It'll come back to you. You shouldn't eat candy floss, Mr. Paneer. Bad for your teeth. Oh, I'm not eating it. I just like having something to hold. You must try to stop worrying so. What? The thumper? Who knows where he'll strike next? I don't think there is a thumper. I think Duncan just fell over and wandered off by himself. He's a clumsy oaf, you know. Aye. He is heavy on his feet, that's for sure. He'll bounce back. He always does. It's Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee I'm worried about. Those silly accusations hurt their feelings. I just hope playing dress-up will lift their spirits. A new look is a tonic for the soul, don't you find? Fred, I don't know how to play dressing-up games as it happens. Doggy dress-up, silly. I just need to pick the right outfits. So many to choose from.
Do you like the pretty pictures? Holiday didn't turn out quite the way he planned, did it? He's like a little boy, crazy for candy floss. My poor little Duncan. All he wanted was to take me out on a date. Perhaps I'll let him, if we ever get out of here. Just can't decide. That's right. I remember. Go on. I was taking a picky, holding a stick of candy for. Oh, I love that stuff, me. I got my hunger up. Just then, like an answer to my prayers, the gong sounded for supper. I came to table, and there I found heaven, my lovely lass, Felicity. I remember the fine, sweet smell of her, like... She smelt like... Um, oh, blast it all. My nose is a blank. I cannot recall. Give it time, love. You'll remember. I just can't remember. It. The sweet scent of felicity, how could I forget? I remember, I remember everything now. I'm cured, you've cured my ham knees. You cured me and, and, I were a right numpty with you, weren't I? Still are, I reckon, but don't go weepy on me now. Tell me what happened after you sat down to supper. I was making a toast when the lights went it. My eyes were adjusting to the dark when... Thump! <gasps> who thumped you? Oh, I never saw who, but I saw what. The supper gong mallet! That's what hit me! The supper gong mallet? You sure, Chuck? Sure? Oh, aye! Look! Look what it did to me! Ooh! Hey, that's a crime, that is. No wonder your mind's been a blank. What kind of person would do that? They should be locked up. You go back to sleep now, love. Get some rest.
that's an extra fluffy batch. Can't do any harm to trade up. Just this once. Oh, crikey, it's heavy. Must be family sized floss. Ah, Grunt. You must know what the debonair dog likes. Why don't you help me pick an outfit for my precious darlings? Use your doggy fashion sense and choose your favorite hat, glasses, and collar. They're show dogs, you know. Prize winners. That's a good choice, but one of my sailor hats is missing. Hoochie Woo and Tinky Wee like to wear matching outfits. Gosh! Rugged. Sparkling. Sweet. Hoochie Woo and Tinky Wee will love this. Hoochie Woo, Tinky Wee. Time for dress up, my dears. Oh, look at this. Hello. You found Mr. Squeaky, you clever things. I was afraid he'd never turn up. Now we're really ready for some fun, aren't we? Let's get dressed up. The poor things are shy. Would you mind leaving us alone for just a little while? It's only you, Gromit. For a moment, I thought... Well, never mind. I'm sorry, lad, but if you want some candy floss, you'll have to get your own. I'm rather... attached to mine. Suspects know Summit, but 
pose a question first. If I keep staring long enough, I'm sure I'll detect something eventually. Caught a scent, have you? Hmm, his motive is clear enough. But could this apparently gentle purveyor of fine groceries be a Jekyll and Hyde character, perhaps? A vicious thumper in disguise? I must interrogate him! Put that candy floss down while I'm interviewing you, if you please. Ooh. I'll ask you again, and this time I want a straight answer. Did you, or did you not, thump Duncan McBiscuit? Did you not? I mean, you did not. Uh, that is to say, me, not you. I mean, I mean, not you, me. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Just you watch yourself, Mr. Paneer, or I'll be watching you. Got it? Not another word. Phew. What happened to my little friend and protector? I'll have to spin open over. Three little suspects. One of them's got to be the thumper. You can do this, Ernest Dibbins. What is it, boy? Yes, I'll have a little chat with the Major. Perhaps he knows something he doesn't know he knows. And if you don't believe me, I invite you to inspect the evidence. Are you having a laugh? Enough questions! We're wasting time! The spies could be signaling their ship. If they give away our position, we're done for! <sighs> All right, yes, fine. So tell me what these so-called spies of yours looks like. Don't mind if I do. It was dark. Dark as... A darkened room. Then the door cracked open, and I saw them! Swarthy little men, with sunken eyes and primitive tattoos, dragging Duncan's limp body. Sailors, judging by their uniforms, natives of the South Seas, I'd say. Stake my reputation on it. Did they look like this? No, no, no. Eyes more sunken, with heavy brows. That's better. Add nautical tattoos round their necks, and don't forget the uniform. There we are. A hint more menace. Just a hint now. Yes, now you've got it. Those are the villains I saw. Right, so this is what they look like, eh? Post that picture to every Jack Tar in the Navy. We've got to stop them before they make landfall. That's just what I'll do. The man means well, but he's a couple of bricks short of the full hod. Good to see you, Private. Oh, oh, you found it. Good 
boy. Now Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee can play sailor again. Does the nice doggy woggy want to choose another outfit? Show me what doggies like best. Aye aye, Captain. Jaunty. I do like those glasses, but I'm not sure they're still in style. And we wouldn't want my darlings walking around in last season's fashions, would we? It isn't fair. While I'm stuck in here, fashion is marching on without me. Good dog. Nice choice. Hoochie woo. Tinky wee. It's dress up time, my darlings. Don't fuss, sweeties. You can go back upstairs in a minute. Right now, I need you to sit still. Mr. Gabble is news agent. Now open for business. Is that a customer I hear? Oi! You wanna shop here? You gotta follow my rules. Do you hear? Take what you like and I'll put it on slate. Business will sort out payment later. Got that? Oi! And don't nick nothing while you're about it. Blimey! That were easy. I don't know why Winnie makes so much fuss. We never close, unless I feel like it. a nice present. That's a stylish look. I do admire those sunglasses. I suppose they're back in fashion. Seems I'm something of a trendsetter. Help me pick another outfit, Gromit. The very latest. This is going to be such fun. Fun! Hoochie woo! Tinky wee! It's dress up time, my darlings! You sure this time, Mr. Wallace? I'll summon the suspects. Right. You have accused Felicity's diminutive dogs of thumping Duncan McBiscuit. To prove it, you need a motive, a weapon, and a witness. Where do you want to start? And the motive is... Can you rustle up a motive, lad?
The motive is... this chew toy. Really? The pups are very attached to that toy. I know from bitter experience. Of course they are. Mr. Squeaky was a present from their mumsy. That doesn't make it a motive for hurting Duncan, though. Oh, yes, it does. Duncan stole the toy from them doggies. Told me so himself. He never did. Oh, he did. If Mr. McBiscuit did indeed take their favourite toy, that could well be a motive for thumping. But why would Duncan want to take Mr. Squeaky? The very idea is ridiculous. Ridiculous? Possibly. But on the balance of probabilities, spot on. I believe this motive meets the test of the law. You're on the way to proving your case, Wallace. We know the motive. What's next? Of course. Now we'll get the facts. Get what facts? Uh, the weapon. I've determined the weapon. Well done. Tell us what, um, what you podge in Winky T used to thump Duncan. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Do you have anything resembling a weapon, lad? I could use one sharpish. The weapon is this mallet. Eee, you bang on the money this time, Wallace. I remember now. That's what it Duncan all read. He said so himself, and he's got the dent in his bonds to prove it. It all makes sense now. That's a maladjusted mallet, all right. Maladjusted? What makes you say that? Well, it looked all fluffy and pink and delicious. But underneath it was rock hard and not very tasty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pinnear. It appears that the mallet is indeed our weapon. Well done, Wallace. The case against uh, them two dogs is coming together. The only piece of the puzzle left is the witness. Lacking. Now we'll know the truth. The truth about... What? Uh, the witness. I've identified the witness. Good show. Tell us who witnessed, um, uh, uh Tinky Woo and Potty Wee assaulting Mr. McBiscuit. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Uh, who would you pick for a witness, lad? My witness is Major Crumb. Yes. Quite right. I saw him. He was black as pitch. The door cracked open, and I saw him dragging away the body. Short, hairy fellows with sunken eyes and tattooed necks. Sailors from the South Seas. Spies! Spies from abroad! No, this again. I think we've heard enough. Wait, Major. Did your spies look like them too? Good heavens! That's them, all right! I'd recognize them anywhere. Put those spies in irons! Don't be silly! They're puppies! Dogs of war, more like! War? war. Oh, there is no war! What? All right, let's let sleeping dogs lie, shall we? The main point is, the Major saw these two dragging away Mr. McBiscuit. Isn't that right, Major? It most certainly is. In that case, according to the law, he is a legitimate witness. Wallace, you've shown us motive, weapon and witness. And according to the powers vested in me as an officer of the law, I now pronounce the case solved. Duncan McBiscuit was thumped by a mallet because of a stolen chew toy. The crime being witnessed by Major Crumb. 
the perpetrators of this evil deed were none other than the canine criminals, Pooji Woo and Tinky Wee. No, it can't be. My darlings are precious, kind, insu wincy doggies, not hooligan hounds. I knew it. Wallace knew it. Put them in chains. Throw away the key. Batten down the hatches. Cabin doors to manual. All in a day's detective work. Oh, I really do feel fit. Ooh. Oh, dear. Lad, the drain must have come unplugged. That's handy. Oh, seems to have created a bit of a current. Help, Gromit, I've got that sinking feeling. We're all going down the drain. Above. They followed their toy down the drain. Well, I'll give them one thing. They're dogging to the end. Welcome aboard, lad. Just a short jump to dry land, eh? Oh no, Robin! I'm about to be flushed! Do something! Oh, 
help me! Get me out of here! Don't do it, lad! You'll blow yourself to smithereens! Gotcha! Thank heavens we've made it, Gromit! We're back on dry land! That's one you owe me, pal. Um, I do hope everyone's had an unforgettable holiday, and that you'll consider visiting West Wallaby Street Waterworld again next year. Lad. We've got quite a clean-up job in front of us. No time for dawdling. From it, from it.